Hello, and welcome to this service of Christian worship. I'm Reverend John Van Nuys. I'm the pastor of Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church, and our church family, our governing board, the session, and our uh, uh, deacons, the diaconate, we all welcome you to uh, this service. Although the pandemic has temporarily separated us physically, we know that we are one in the Lord, so we are one spiritually. We're thankful that you are here. I imagine on the other side of the screen, there are some familiar faces. There are also some new faces. So please know that you are welcome. Please join me in our call to worship, which comes from Psalm 8, verse 1, 
verses 3 through 5 and verse 9. O Lord, our King, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. When I look at your heavens, at the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. O Lord, our King, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Our opening hymn, hymn is sung by our choir director, Jenny Swick. to confession. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. God sent the Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Let us confess our sins before God, and let us confess our sins against our neighbor. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, you pardon all who ask you to forgive them. Show mercy to us, O God, and cleanse us from our sin. Help us to put away our habits that hurt others, our resentments that prevent peace, and our sins which separate us from you. Create in us a clean heart, O God. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and sanctify us by the power of your Holy Spirit. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Let us now continue to confess our sins in silence. Amen. Receive now the declaration of pardon. In chapter 15, verse 1 of Galatians, Paul, or rather God, through Paul, tells us this, For freedom Christ has set us free. Therefore, stand firm, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. The things we confess are erased. We are completely, eternally unburdened of them. If God has gone so far as to purge our sins... Who are we to remember them? Remind yourself of this when you begin beating yourself up over something in the past, something for which you have already been forgiven. Why pick up the yoke of slavery that God has removed? 
Instead, repent. Change your ways and simply move on, walking in the way of your Savior. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Plant in our hearts the seed of your word, O God. Like trees planted by streams of living water, make our lives deeply rooted and flourishing in your way, will, and spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture today comes from the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 8 through verses uh, 13. So listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. The voice of my beloved, look, he comes leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Love gone wrong. Jeffrey Epstein, Bill Cosby, Matt Lauer. It's evident that our world is messed up when it comes to love. Love is equated with sex. Sex is equated to power. And power knows nothing of respect, tenderness, vulnerability, and intimacy. Everywhere in our world, we see love gone wrong. But in the Bible, we find love gone right. Right here in the book of Solomon, in the Song of Solomon, in eight chapters of love poetry in which two lovers woo each other, longing to be together. In the Song of Solomon, there's no domination. Each lover respects the other in mutual delight. They enjoy each other and creation without demeaning or debasing anyone or anything. Here is love gone right. The lectionary takes us through a three-year cycle of scripture with readings from every book in the Bible. This Sunday gives us the Song of Solomon, which most preachers avoid because it doesn't mention God once. You can look and see for yourself. While at the same time, it makes abundantly clear that erotic love is good. To be a creature is good. To be earthy is good. That shouldn't surprise us because God made creation and called it good and called us very good. I think God made sure this book made it into the Bible because God knew we were going to get all hung up about sex and a lot of other things too. The spiritual writer Richard Rohr rightly notes that we Western Christians largely live in our minds. We've forgotten about the gift of our bodies, about the creaturely blessing of being part of nature. We've largely made Christianity about beliefs, about leaving the earth and going to heaven, about getting away from creation and the blessing of even having a body at all. The Song of Solomon, though, says, not so fast. Creation is good. This life is good. Having a body is good. Being in love is good. What's more, desire is good. Following the church father Augustine, Western Christianity has largely seen desire as something that's bad. And certainly some desires are. But the spiritual writer Philip Sheldrake reminds us that there are good desires as well. When properly followed and rightly enjoyed, 
Good desires can fulfill our heart's deepest longings and help us live more fully within God's will. What if LeBron James had ignored his desire, his love of basketball? What if Mozart hadn't pursued his love of music? What if Rosa Parks had said no to her desire for justice? What a loss for us all. Imagine a world where good desires didn't exist. Imagine not having a body. Imagine not enjoying a cold drink on a hot day or not being able to enjoy the blessings of romantic love. It would be a plain, boring, disappointing world if we couldn't experience desire, if we couldn't fall in love, and if we couldn't creaturely enjoy this good world, which God made in love to share with us. The Song of Solomon contains a lot of wisdom. It's okay to enjoy life. Some of us never got that message from our families, but it's true. Yes, we are to do good things for God, but we also are to enjoy life. Yes, we are to share blessings, but it's okay to enjoy them too. Not as hedonistic consumers indiscriminately devouring experiences in others, but as thoughtful, loving people who are deeply connected to God, neighbor, and creation in an ecology of reciprocity, where blessings are enjoyed and shared, where everyone is included, and where everyone has enough to live and thrive. God wants all of us to have a good life, and not just when we get to heaven, but right now. God didn't create us to endure life, but to enjoy life. It's okay to have needs. It's okay to rest. It's good to love the body that God gave you as it is. We aren't to demean God's handiwork by cruelly comparing ourselves to photoshopped supermodels on glossy magazine covers at the grocery checkout line. It's wrong to denigrate what God has made. That's true when it comes to creation, and that's true when it comes to you. After all, you're part of creation, and you are good just as you are. Instead of being too hot to handle, maybe the Song of Solomon is just what we need right now, ethically and ecologically. Here's a vision that can rehumanize our understanding of what love can be. Here's a vision that helps reconnect us with creation and love creation before it's too late. This is all good news. God is love. Creation is good. When we're loving, we express our deepest humanity. When we value our bodies, our neighbors, and creation, we all come alive. Let us pray. Let us pray to God who is our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, we thank you for your good creation. Mindful of future generations, guide our care of its beauty and bounty. Bless all who farm and bless the land with favorable weather for growing crops. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the gift of life and love. Help us to share your love through our compassion. Bless all who are in need through our care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, bless all who are ill, infirm, and broken. Especially, we pray for Marty, 
Peg, Roger, and Stephanie. Pour out your richest blessing to strengthen, mend, and fill them with health and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, you comfort us when we mourn. Be with all who grieve, especially those who mourn for Helen, Scott, and Barry. Grant them your presence and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you provide bread in the wilderness. You provide lovingly and generously for all our needs. Trusting in your providence and confident of your grace, we ask your blessings upon these persons and concerns which we now name silently before you. O oh God, we thank you for receiving the prayers we have offered. By the power of your Holy Spirit, make us all one in Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is sung by Jenny Swick. I danced in the morning when the world was begun And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun And I came down from heaven Receive now the charge and the benediction. I charge us all to enter the dance of life, to rejoice in creation, to give thanks for our bodies, our neighbors, all creatures, great and small. This world is good. Let us, with God, love it and love each other and truly make this a paradise of blessing and love for all. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>